no, thank you very much. Um, yeah, well, we're going to talk a bit about the place, the building itself, um, but I'll take you on a little bit of a story first, because I think it's fair to say these buildings aren't off the peg. They're, they're quite bespoke and they're quite um, unique to their, to their place. I think what's been quite interesting today is that we've heard a lot about the use of the building and the activity that goes with it, which is fantastic, because that's what places and buildings are about. What we've done is produced a place for that stuff to happen, and we hope that it's the kind of place that attracts people and promotes that kind of um, aspirational agenda in terms of active travel, um, and we hope we've found a good place for it. So in terms of where, where, where we've actually located the buildings, um, I'm actually a landscape architect by trade, I'm not an architect, and um, we, we, we design buildings in open as well. What I quite like about this plan is you can hardly see the buildings, which is great. Um, we're somewhere up here at the moment, Slessor Gardens, we've got the pocket gardens coming down, b &A sits this side here, and this is Waterfront Place, so this is what we're talking about. The two buildings are actually this structure here and this structure here. I think the journey I'll take you on is more about what these, why they that form and why we've tried to hide them so much. I think the context is really important, these are quite out of date, there's some fantastic images coming up on all sorts of bits of social media now, but um, we were involved in the BNA fantastic project and it does set a context for this in terms of a mixture of uses and a mixture of activities that build up to Waterfront Place. Um, there's a lot of kind of um, nice symbiotic kind of uses that happen there, cultural, active, all those different things. Um, Slessor Gardens as well, I think the reason I put these in is that at the moment the Waterfront Master Plan is mainly about infrastructure. There's a lot of building work coming into it now and a lot of activity coming in. But these gardens began to bring people here as well. There's sort of the human element of the master plan and what we're hoping is Waterfront Place becomes that too. And that the Active Travel Hub begins to really lock that in as a special place in, in Dundee. I think they took the one of the Queen out. Um, so, <laughs> It's this at the moment. This is the um, it's the B and A um, uh, contractors compound at the moment. Um, there's the B and A site, Slessor Gardens. And that's the that's Waterfront Place. That's what we're looking to transform into a new type of space for Dundee. We've got a great, active, programmable park here. We've got cultural uses, we've got the heritage uses. So to bring active travel into this is is really exciting. So we came up with a story. I think landscape architects, architects always like to have a story to hang things on. It helps us to try and explain things. And we like the idea of a walk to the beach. So we looked at the way that you would approach a typical East Coast beach in Scotland from meadow through pine forest, through dunes to the coast and finally to the sea. And we looked at how we could transform that into an experience as we move through Slessor Gardens, through the meadow, the pine forest, the dunes, down to the beach and finally into the water itself. That's basically what we use to try and structure the site from north to south. We also quite like the idea of the Victorian urban kitsch waterfront. So looking at things like the colorful beach huts and all the, all the various bits and pieces that come into it. It just helps enliven it a little bit. It's not too serious, it's not too earnest, and it just lifts the place a little bit. And we like the idea of a place that could be fantastic in sunny weather. Beaches become, you know, the, the difference in terms of climate, and this is quite obvious, but the beaches really amplify this. Summer, hot, sunny day, absolutely full of people, packed. Cold, windy day, really dramatic, but it's a place to find space on your own as well. And that's that's quite an interesting thing. So if you think about that journey to the beach, we start back here through the dunes, through the pine forest, which we've got using pines, birch trees within this space, walking through, through the dunes, to the beach, and finally to the waterfront. It's quite a simple way of looking at it. But within that, we've tried to embed the architecture. So these dune forms and the, 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 these, um, all of these um, earth mounds begin to create a space that has a bit of enclosure to it. So it helps that feeling of, on a busy day, it helps focus activity. On a cold, windy day, it actually gives you that little bit of protection or that feeling of protection as you enter a space. So here we go. Here's some of the just very initial concept images this is the building in the background here. So a sloped building, green roof, and we're looking at a kind of concrete shell structure with uh, a court end fin that presents itself to the street on the north-hand side. 
And this is just looking out across the terrace, so you've got the DNA. What we're quite keen to do is create a new backdrop or a new <coughs> sort of, um, a setting for the DNA as well. A slightly softer setting within these dune forms that begins to frame the building. And this is another reason we wanted to kind of play down the architecture. We've got one of the most talked about buildings written in the world at the moment. I'm not too sure. I see some of the stuff on social media, it's gone very far. We didn't want to compete with it, we wanted to do something different. So we've embedded the architecture into the space and it becomes a new setting for the DNA as well. So this just shows the urban beach, land dune forms, dune forms coming through, and these are the two buildings here. So we've got the, the, the sort of more cafe use, the hub, and this is more about store. And so in terms of servicing, that's a, pretty much a service building, and this is more about storage, so it's not a habitable space in itself. <laughs> Just looking at this in section. So this is how the buildings present themselves, just in front of the B and A. And we're looking to try and incorporate things like terracing, seating terraces, so that the centre of that space becomes a place where you could have performance or exhibition or events. So really, it's about bringing a real range of activities to this as well. As I said before, it's not purely about active travel, but it's about creating a place. The place is dynamic, and it can it can hold lots of different functions. So as I mentioned, coming back to the buildings again, what we've done is we've embedded a, a volume for the building within landform, and we've done that in both of them there, so very initial concept diagrams there. And looking through here, you can see that's the volume, that's the internal space with the roof light blazing to the front and back, so the north and south elevations are glazed, um, and this is how it presents itself to Slessor Gardens. So on the north hand side, this Corten thin that cuts through and people will actually be able to walk up this as well. We like the idea that people can actually get slightly elevated higher up onto a building. And that idea that you can walk over a building and through a building, we quite like that. And that's something we've explored, as demonstrated by these rather great people here. And again, the store and, and the cafe there as well. And just beginning the hints of the water features that sit that side of it. So as you move through towards the waterfront, it's just about hints of things as well. We looked at kind of aquatic planting in there as well, just representing different habitats and layers as you come through that space. And that helps contain the terrace space to the front, which allows the cafe to spill out. In terms of a roof plan here, so just floor areas, about 200, 225 meters squared. But you can see that the effective floor area is in here, but the actual the form of the building is much larger, and that's because the roof slope and it forms that forms that land in shape. Um, because of that, it's a concrete shell. Things are inside are quite prescribed, and this is where I think the story builds up: is that it's a bespoke building for a bespoke setting. It's it's not your typical kind of um, shell and core fit out building. But there's a reason for that, and the reason has been that strong concept and the drive to create a place and an exciting place for this active travel hub to be there. Some sections and elevations there. But again, the store here with the volume inside. We've worked quite hard to make, make that internal space as usable as possible. So, provision slightly lower down for toilets and things like that. We've actually also used, coming back to the kind of the Victorian kitsch look of the urban beach, we've used some other architectural forms in there as well. So, we've got some um, metal clad. Uh, beach huts that actually form some of the servicing aspects of it, so that fits in with the cooling and heating of the building, but we can actually touch that to these, and that's how, that's how those, some of those things work. And then you go, a whistle top, whistle stop floor, but uh, just to give you a flavour of not just the buildings, but the place that this, this active travel probably be.